Lenovo is releasing lots of tablets every year and I reviewed pretty much all of them. I'm NJ from MyNextTablet.com and here are the best Lenovo tablets you can buy right now. There are a couple of things you should know about before we start. First of all, there are no premium tablets on this list because in the last couple of years Lenovo only released mid-range to low-end tablets. So if you want a high-end gaming tablet or a tablet with pen support, then you have to check out the ones from Samsung and Apple and in some cases from Huawei too. Also, all of the Android tablets are running almost pure Android. So there's no heavy UI on top like you do get with Samsung, Huawei and Amazon tablets. It's almost pure Android. However, Lenovo tends to release only one major update if they release one at all. That's certainly a downside. Another downside is that all of the recent Android tablets that I reviewed had a Viteware level of L3. And that means that you cannot watch HD videos on Netflix. So you cannot watch Netflix movies or TV shows in HD quality on the recent Android tablets. That's a huge downside. Okay, let's get to the best Android tablets you can buy right now. And the best one in my opinion is the Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab, which is a very nice tablet with a very unique design. It has a 10.1 inch full HD display, it's an IPS screen and it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 439 processor. That one is fast enough for light gaming, for mid-range gaming, but certainly not for high-end gaming. You can get it with 3 to 4 GB of RAM and a 32 to 64 GB internal storage. It has a fantastic design with a mix of a metal and a plastic body and it has this built-in grip and even a stand that you can fold out and even a hole so you can hang it on your wall or on your fridge or something. On its sides are very nice speakers and the battery life is very long with 16 hours in my standard test. For my standard test I'm always looping an HD video at a medium brightness and activated Wi-Fi for all of my reviews. It is running almost pure Android 9, although there are some customizations like there's a Lenovo Entertainment Center, but you can deactivate that. I like that it supports the Google Assistant Ambient Mode and that means that you can use it as a smart speaker, you know, like a smart display. You can just say, okay Google and let it do something for you. As I said earlier, it does not support Netflix and HD. So I think the Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab is a great choice if you're looking for a great YouTube tablet, for instance, because it has a long battery life, good speakers, a nice screen, and a very unique design. And you can use it as a smart speaker. I really like the Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab. Its really major downside is that you cannot watch Netflix movies in HD. It's just very sad. The next tablet on the list is the Lenovo Tab M10 FHD Plus, which has a 10.3 inch Full HD screen. It is a very nice IPS screen with a Full HD resolution and inside runs a MediaTek Helio P22 T processor, which is good enough for mid-range gaming, mid-range to low end gaming. You can get it with 3 to 4 GB of RAM and a 32 GB up to 128 GB of internal storage. It does have a pretty high-end metal body. It feels surprisingly high-end. The speakers are only okay and the battery life it is pretty good with 14 hours in my standard test. Again, it's running almost pure Android 9 and I'm expecting it to get an update to Android 10, although that's not fully guaranteed. But in the past, tablets like these have gotten one update with Lenovo. Again, you cannot watch Netflix in HD. If you're looking for a great YouTube tablet, I think the Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab is the better choice. This tablet is great if you're looking for a nice tablet to browse the web with, to read some news, your feeds and so on. It does have a nice screen and a very high-end body, but not so great speakers. So I wouldn't say it's a great entertainment tablet since it doesn't have that great speakers and since you can't watch HD Netflix. Next on the list is the Lenovo Tab P10 that I reviewed a while ago. It does have a 10.1 inch Full HD screen and a Qualcomm Snapdragon 450 processor, which is a quite nice combination. However, it's relatively old. I will get to that later. That's why I can only recommend it if you're getting it as a deal. You can get it with 3 to 4 GB of RAM and a 32 to 64 GB storage. It does have a glass body and a metal frame and that combination feels quite high end, similar to the Samsung Galaxy Tab as four. I like that we're getting four pretty good speakers and a fingerprint scanner. It's the only Lenovo tablet on this list with a fingerprint scanner. In my standard battery test I got a runtime of 11.5 hours which is pretty good. Again it is running pure Android but it was released with Android 8 and it did get an update to Android 9. 
However, that's why I don't think that it will ever get an update to Android 10 because it got one already and yeah, in the past these tablets only got one update as I said. So I think it's a good choice if you're finding it as a good deal, if you find a great deal somewhere because it does have four good speakers, a fingerprint scanner, but yeah, no updates. So I can only recommend it if you can find it at a really good price. Okay, let's get to the Lenovo Tab M10. Now the Lenovo Tab M10 that I reviewed had a full HD screen and a Snapdragon 450. I cannot recommend that version anymore because if you want this kind of tablet then you can either get the Lenovo Tab P10 discounted or the new Lenovo Tab M10 FHD+. However, Lenovo also released a Lenovo Tab M10 with an HD display that is a lot cheaper. It has a 10.1 inch HD screen and a Qualcomm Snapdragon 429. So that is quite a slow processor, but it's good enough for normal web browsing if you don't have too high expectations. It has 2GB of RAM and a 16GB internal storage. It does have a full plastic body but it is quite well built. The full HD version had a battery life of 8 hours in my test and I'm guessing that the HD version will have a similar runtime. Now the full HD version was running Android 8 and got updated to Android 9 and the HD version was released with Android 9. Now that we are getting to the cheaper tablets, this one is below $150 or around $150, I'm not sure if it will get that one update. I think it's a decent choice if you want to spend as little money as possible and you don't need a full HD screen but just want a very cheap tablet for normal web browsing and so on. Next on the list is the Lenovo Tab M8. And while Lenovo didn't release any premium tablets, as I said, I think this is one of the best choices if you're looking for a mid-range to low-end 8-inch Android tablet. You can get the Lenovo Tab M8 with an HD screen and also with a full HD screen. The HD version has a MediaTek A22 processor and the full HD version has a much faster Helio P22T processor. Both of them are okay for mid-range to low-end gaming, but certainly not for high-end gaming, none of them. You can get them with 2 to 3 gigabytes of RAM and a 16 to 32 gigabyte storage. I really like the metal body because even though the Tab M8 is so cheap, it does feel quite high-end. Like it's almost at the same quality of an iPad mini or so. The battery life is also very long with 23.5 hours in my standard battery test. Again, for my standard battery test, I'm running an HD video locally at medium brightness, but still, I think it's a pretty good runtime. It is running Android 9, and again, it's almost pure vanilla Android 9. There are some small customizations like the Lenovo Entertainment Center, and there are some games pre-installed, but you can uninstall all of those games and deactivate the Lenovo Entertainment Center. I think it's a great choice if you're looking for an affordable 8-inch tablet. Yeah, I really enjoyed using it. Okay, these were the Android tablets from Lenovo that I can comfortably recommend. Now we're getting to a couple of cheaper options that might be interesting if you have very low expectations and if you just want an as cheap tablet as possible. And that starts with the Lenovo Tab M7, which is a super cheap 7-inch tablet. The Tab M7 has a very low resolution of 1024 by 600 pixels, but it is an IPS screen and actually for the price it's quite a nice 7 inch screen. It is running a MediaTek MT8321 processor, which is a very slow processor. And that's the major downside of this tablet. The screen and everything else is fine, but the performance is not good at all. You can only play like very simple games nicely and sure you can read the news with it a bit but just don't expect a fast tablet here at all. You can get it with 1 to 2 GB of RAM and an 8, 16 or 32 GB internal storage. The battery life is not bad, it got 10 hours in my standard test. Now it is running pure Android and it is Android 9 Go. That's a lighter edition of Android that does not include all features. For example, there's no split screen view, but all the basic features um, are supported and you can install pretty much every app out of the Google Play Store. But again, very demanding games and so on, they won't run on here. Now generally, I would recommend you to spend a little bit more money and get the Lenovo Tab M8. But if you want a super cheap tablet and it should be 7 inches and you want a nice screen and just something very basic, maybe just really to read the news with or so, then yeah, it can be a decent choice, but not great.
another tablet that might only be an interesting choice if you get it at a very very low price and with very low price I mean around 50 euros or 50 US dollars or so it must be very cheap otherwise I can't recommend it and that's the Lenovo Tab E10. Now the Lenovo Tab E10 has a 10.1 inch HD screen which is not too bad but what is quite bad is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 210 processor it's a pretty slow ship again similar to the Lenovo Tab M7 the performance of these super cheap tablets is just not good and it's not good for multitasking and so on at all and of course no high-end gaming not whatsoever here no high-end gaming really no it has 1 to 2 gigabytes of RAM and a 16 to 32 gigabytes storage the battery life is pretty bad my test 7 hours yeah, not too bad but it's not a good battery life. It is running Android 8.1 Go out of the box and here Lenovo clearly says that it will not get updated so it will be running Android 8.1 Go forever. The Go edition is the simpler version of Android again but again you can install most apps out of the Google Play Store. So I cannot really recommend the Lenovo Tab E10 unless again you really want a very cheap tablet and you can find it as a good deal. I mean for around 50 euros, 50 US dollars, maybe a little bit more and you want a super cheap tablet then it can be an okay choice for some but again if you want a good 10 inch tablet I would at least go with the Lenovo Tab M10 HD. Okay now let's get to the Windows tablets that Lenovo released. In the past Lenovo had a couple of quite nice high-end Windows tablets like the Lenovo Mix 510 and then the Lenovo Mix 520 which I did review and there were very nice tablets for the prices especially and they are still good tablets but they are quite old. The last one was running Intel 8th generation core processors so they were alternatives to the Microsoft Surface Pro 6. So they are quite old so I wouldn't recommend them anymore. I would just get the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 if you want a high-end Windows tablet. But Lenovo does have a pretty nice low-end Windows tablet and that's the Lenovo IdeaPad D330 which is a pretty nice alternative, cheap alternative to the Microsoft Surface Go. You can get the IdeaPad D330 with a 10.1 inch screen with either an HD resolution or a full HD resolution. Obviously the full HD screen will be nice and that's the version that I reviewed. You can get it with an Intel N4000 dual core chip or with an up to N5000 quad core chip and that's the one that I reviewed and that's the one I can comfortably recommend. You can also choose between 2 to 4 gigabytes of RAM and a 32 gigabyte, 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte of internal storage. Now it does have a full plastic body and it does not feel as high end as the Surface Go for instance but it seems to be well made. It does have a removable keyboard dock which is pretty nice and also the keyboard for a 10.1 inch keyboard is pretty good. I've been able to type on it quite comfortably. In my standard test I got a runtime of 11.5 hours which does not sound as great compared to an Android tablet but for a Windows tablet that is a very very good result. It is a Windows 10 tablet of course. Yeah, the Lenovo IdeaPad D330 is the cheapest Windows tablet that I can comfortably recommend. I really think it's a good alternative to the Microsoft Surface Go. It's a great choice if you want a small Windows tablet and if you just don't want to spend as much money as for a high-end tablet like the Surface Pro 7 or so. Alright, these are the best Lenovo tablets you can buy right now. If you have any questions, please feel free to write me down below in the comments and also check out the link in the description to mynexttablet.com. There we've got a list to the best Lenovo tablets that will always be up to date. So if you're watching this video in a year from now or so or even longer, just check out the link and there you will find the currently best Lenovo tablets. Again, I'm reviewing almost every tablet that is released almost worldwide. I'm NJ for mynexttablet.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Wow, 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 wow.